So welcome to Techno Day at Life, and my name is Jeff, and so today we're going to be turning a Zima board uh, into a firewall router with the Sophos XG firewall router software. And you can do this actually with any computer that has two Ethernet ports. So if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will try to remember to put links in the description to everything that I mentioned in the video today. So how this all started is one of my last videos, I reviewed a bunch of firewall uh, router software. And uh, I tried to do the normal ones like PFSense and OpenSense that everybody uses, but they would not work on my hardware. And so two things actually came out of that in different comments. So one was that the microcode on this mini PC needed to be updated. And once I did that, I was actually able to s install PFSense, but then it still failed somewhere along the process there. So slight step forward there. The other comment that actually uh, caught my attention was somebody said that the Sophos XG Home Edition of the firewall router software was actually free. And it's just hard to find on their website. So what you need to do is Google Sophos Home XG, and this will come up this web page. Download it, and you'll need to sign into an account, and you have to give them their email because once you download it, uh, you have, actually they'll give you uh, send you a key that you actually have to register the software that then makes it free for a thousand years basically. Next, you'll need to download Belana Etcher, which is a ISO burning software, and install that. Get a USB drive, plug that into your computer. So open up Etcher, click on Flash from File, pick your ISO, and open it. Select that, and then burn. So once you have that, so this is not a Zemo board, but I'm going to use the example because it's actually working right now. Take your USB drive, stick it into your computer, start it up, and you'll need to hit either F12, Escape, or Delete to uh, get it to go to the BIOS. So for me, I need to press F12. That takes us to our BIOS. We need to go over to Boot. Go down to Boot option number one. Hit Enter. Scroll down to Lexar USB drive and hit enter. And then over one. And then save and exit. So for me, I found out that putting it under that just plain boot drive option actually worked better than doing the other options there for USB. That's why I did that. So now the Sophos installer is starting up. We hit yes to continue, then it'll start cleaning the disk, and then formatting the partitions. And here we want to put yes to reboot. And instead I put one, and let's try yes again. And now it's rebooting. So the nice thing about Sophos, because it is based on Linux, is actually a much easier install, so it found our hardware right away. And so for this, unlike PFSense, we actually adjust everything after it's the operating system is actually installed rather than before. So now it's rebooting and you can see here that it has four cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. So that is a limitation of Sophos Home is that it's only four cores and it will only use eight gigabytes of RAM, although I think it's actually six gigabytes of RAM. Next we'll put in our password here, which is admin. And here we actually have to, instead of clicking uh, enter or return on what we want, we actually have to press the letter. So we have to press A for this to work. Once we do that, we go back in after we sign back in. And so now we need to press one for network configuration. And so you might want to do it right away, but it takes about five minutes for the network configuration to come up. So many steps in this process, you actually have to wait for things to happen. And so this is one of those. 
If you do do it too early, you can just hit enter again and then try one again. And then eventually it will come up. We want to hit one for network interface. And so here we need the LAN port information. So 172.16.16.16. And then we can just hit enter to continue and then enter again and then enter on all these because we're not going to change everything. And then we go zero to exit. The LAN address that I just said out loud at 172.16.16.16, I think it was, that is the address that we need to actually log into the GUI to start changing things around. So you have to write that down. And again, it's the LAN address, not the WAN address. So next we click Accept and then click Start Setup. And we need to change our password, our Ministry of Password. And so there's the th information you need to keep track of. It tells you if you've done it. Then hit Enter. Then we need to create a storage master key. So same recommendations there. And then now we need to name our firewall, and my wife gave me this suggestion, I love my wifey. And then we pick our time zone, and then we hit enter again. So here's where we put in our serial number that we got in the email that we got from Sophus after we register. Otherwise, it's just a 30-day trial. Uh, if you just sign up, then you get a basically a thousand-year trial. Now, for some reason, after you put the license in, you lose your internet connection and you have to start all back over again. So uh, it's supposed to reboot by itself, but it doesn't. So basically, I just unplug it and replug it back in. Then it reboots again. And again, we have to start at the beginning again. I accept, start setup. And we have to create a password again because it doesn't remember master key again. Our server name again. I love my wifey. Our time zone. So down below here, I noticed that the time is actually two minutes off from what it actually is on my computer. And so the first time that I went through this, I actually changed it to do, be two minutes right. And so this time I actually just left it two minutes off and it seemed to work. So we'll see how it goes from here. Then here it says uh, setup is complete. And you can see there's our basically 900, over 900 year uh, expiration dates. And so this, if you look uh, in the middle where it says choose gateway, it's in router mode. So you can also put it in bridge mode, which is right underneath there. And it has everything set up for you already. Hit continue and you can pick out the network protections that you can put in. So for this video, we're just going to leave it like that. So it happens faster. Then we need to put in an email for notifications and so and a sender's address. We need to create a encryption password. And for some reason, this password, it doesn't have the same rules as the other ones. Then we got our confirmation of summary. And it will apply the changes and then restart. So now let's go into the GUI to see what that looks like. So now on our website, we want to put in HTTPS colon slash slash for me 172.16.16.16 and then you have to put colon 4444 we're going to click on advanced and accept risk and continue now we need to log into our firewall so then you'll get the chance to uh, join Sophus Central Cloud Management and this is free as far as I know and so this allows you to access your router from anywhere. And then so on this page, we have the basics of what's going on with our router at the current moment.
Uh, over on this side, we have security risks, application control, zero day protection, those things like that. And then we can go down the list here. So activities, reports, reports, zero days, diagnostics. Then we have rules. And this is where we create our firewall rules. Intrusion prevention web and here's where we can turn on our different things like blocking suspicious risky downloads, adult content, not suitable for office, bandwidth heavy, unprotected browsing, unproductive browsing, not suitable for schools and how you do that would just be click over here and now it should be blocked. Then we have applications uh, wireless, so when we set up our guest and regular network, email rules, web server, active threat response. This uses external analytics and pushes uh, information to your firewall. VPN access, site to site VPN. So this is our network. So we can do all our different things here. So it can zones, uh, Manager, DNS, DH, DHCP, uh, cellular even, IP tunnels, and dynamic DNS. Routing is next. Authentication, system services, Sophos control. And so this you have to actually register with Sophos to use. Profiles for what we want to happen. Our hosts, administration, backup and firmware, and then finally our certificates. Sophos XG Home is a great firewall router software. It has tons of customization, uh, and it's a great alternative to PFSense and OpenSense if those don't work for you, like they didn't work for me on my hardware. Uh, if you want me to go over more of Sophos and how to set up firewalls and uh, block traffic and block ads and things like that, leave a comment down below and I'll do another video about that. That's it for today though, and if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.